Welcome to Jackie's Kitchen, friends, family, anybody who might be new stopping by. Thank you for taking the time to check our channel out and see what we got going on in Jackie's Kitchen. So today I'm going to make um, a very simple but really good uh, meatloaf and potatoes. Uh, I'm going to actually put the meatloaf in and with the potatoes surrounding it all in one pan and throw it in the oven and just basically let it go, let it cook. So what makes my meatloaf different from most other meatloafs, and I don't even know if it's mine or whoever's, but we've tried a lot of things. We do a lot of fun stuff with meatloaf at my house because we all like it. And so today I'm gonna use a uh, two pound pack of, I'm using Angus from Walmart, 8515 Lean ground beef. I am going to use a pack of um, McCormick's meatloaf seasoning. Uh, I got the one that's 30% less sodium, just in case I want to add other salty things. <laughs> so instead of breadcrumbs or bread or crackers or whatever, I'm going to use extra toasty Cheez-Its for my crumbs. I love the effect that this gives to the meatloaf. I'm going to add two eggs in and then Secret ingredient, I'm gonna put a fourth a cup of brown sugar. It adds a really good, you know, I don't know what you call it. It adds a really good kind of like, you know, glue texture to the inside of the meatloaf when it all comes through. So anyway, I'm also gonna just take a few, um, I did wash and dry the potatoes. It makes them a lot easier to cut. I'm leaving the skins on and I'm gonna cube dice or you know quarter these up into little pieces and toss them in a pack of ranch seasoning with some olive oil and put them around the outside of meatloaf for our cooking so hang on just a second give me a chance to move everything so that you can see what i'm going to do it's going to be super simple um, i'm going to mix it all up and it's not even going to take that long and we'll have some really fantastic meatloaf in no time so the cool thing is this meatloaf doesn't even take a whole lot of work and uh, it's not even a whole, whole lot of ingredients, really. I actually forgot, you know, you're supposed to add some kind of like liquid or milk. Um, I normally add some sort of soup and uh, I didn't have it, uh, the one I wanted today, so I'm gonna switch. So for my liquid, I'm just gonna use heavy cream because I have some in the refrigerator that I needed to use up. Um, so I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna stick the meat in here and I'm just gonna, and I don't wanna overwork it because I'm gonna grind it up with all the other stuff here shortly. But I'm just gonna kind of break it into pieces so everything can mix together, get all the flavors incorporated in through all the sections. And this is about two, like I think I told you earlier, I think this is like 2.25 pounds and um, it's probably not gonna draw up a lot, but here and there. So I'm gonna add my two eggs to this and then there's no specific order. I'm literally just dumping everything in. My fourth a cup of brown sugar, my packet of meatloaf seasoning. I mean, if you have your own seasoning that you like to use for uh, your meatloaf, um, that's fine. I don't really have a specific brand. I just like all the stuff that comes in the meatloaf seasoning pack, so I almost always use one. Um, and so I have another favorite meatloaf that I'll show you another time that I'm gonna do uh, with another ingredient that makes it really good. But with that one, I do not add the brown sugar. So anyway, I'm gonna, it says, you know, usually like a fourth a cup or whatever, but I'm gonna kind of wing it on this because the cream's a little thick, of course, once so the milk. I'm gonna add that in. Now this is a seven ounce box of these uh, extra toasty Cheez-Its and you can use whatever flavor if you like barbecue or the hot and spicy or whatever, whatever flavor you want in your meatloaf. Um, but the cheese its and the cheese crackers always make it really good. So um, I always try to use the re recipes I see, it's funny, they like on the back of the McCormick wrapper it says one fourth cup of breadcrumbs. I don't know about you, but for me, that's never enough. Like one fourth of a cup of the crumbs it makes it like a little bit wetter and I don't really prefer it very wet like my meatloaf I want it like cooked you know I think slimy ground beef is kind of you know stomach turner but you know to each his own if y'all like raw meat so so be it because I do like my steaks medium well with the ribbon of tea um that's how I prefer it so I want to get these all kind of broke up I don't want them like paper thin but since this is seven ounces um I don't know, I'm probably gonna put, I'm gonna put them all in. I usually do anyway, unless I have a big box. But 
Um, I like a lot of these crumbs in here, and so it's going to get, you know, take away any extra moisture and maybe cook it faster. So also, guys, I am going to preheat my oven to 375, and I'm going to put mine in for about an hour to begin with and make sure everything's good because um, I do want my meat all the way cooked. I'm dumping all those crumbs in there. And it does seem like a lot, but you'll see. Um, that's all my ingredients. So I'm gonna mix it up. And I'm wearing these gloves because I just cannot stand to have um, the meat underneath my fingernails. So I'm gonna use my gloves here and this, but I do wanna make sure I got all the crackers in and wet. And when you see this in a minute, you're gonna see why a fourth a cup would definitely not have been enough crumbs for this meatloaf. So, okay, it's mixed up. I'm gonna put it in here at form a loaf, and then I'm gonna come back in a sec so that I can show you what it looks like right before I get ready to chop up and add the coated ranch potatoes. This, everybody, is what it's gonna look like once you get it formed into your loaf and in your pan. Don't forget you have your, uh, oven preheating at 375 and then it's going to take me just a couple minutes to chop up and dice up my potatoes and toss them in the stuff so i'll be back in one sec simple i've got maybe like six or seven potatoes and i'm leaving the skins on and i'm just going to cut these into some cubes or you know pieces bite-sized pieces in any shape that you might want them. and i'm going to just continue doing that all the way throughout as quickly as possible uh, so that I can have these about done around the time that the oven is warm enough. So uh, these are not tiny small. They're also not, you know, super big. But you can make them whatever size. You can dice them. You can peel them. You can make your potatoes any way you prefer them. I actually like the peel, like, you know, if they're, especially if they're, they're washed good. So I'm going to keep the peels on just for some added nutrients like I'm so healthy <laughs> anyway so I'm going to cut up these seven potatoes and as soon as I'm finished with that I'll be back and show you just the like 10 second process why I toss them and put them in with the meatloaf hey so I know this is kind of weird randomly in the middle of the video but somehow I managed to lose where I showed you how to mix up the potatoes for the video so uh, I don't actually have the potatoes because they were already cooked. So um, what I would do after you cut them up is put them either in a you know a large Ziploc bag or a bowl with a lid, but make sure the lid's on tight so when you start to shake to combine, it doesn't fly off and you lose your potatoes. So do that. Put maybe a fourth a cup or a little less of olive oil, vegetable oil, corn oil, canola oil, whatever type of oil you have at home will work just fine. Um, there is going to be some grease in the pan from the meatloaf as well to mix with it. So it's just basically whatever oil you want. But I'd put her in about a fourth a cup into whatever container. If you don't have a container with a lid or a Ziploc, that's cool too. Throw them in a bowl, you know, mix with a spoon just like you would do anything else. And then dump your pack of ranch seasoning in. And then either, you know, shake up your bowl or shake up your bag or mix with your spoon in your bowl. And once you get them all evenly coated, then you'll dump them in the pan surrounding the meatloaf, um, as you'll see in just a second. All right, guys, I'm going to pull the meatloaf out. I'm at the 40-minute uh, mark, so I'm going to pull mine out and take the foil off and then stick it back in for 25 more minutes without the foil on top so that it can crisp up. But, so, now... It's steamy. It's starting to cook. The center is still quite a bit pink. So I'm gonna pop it back in, like I said, with no foil on it and reset the timer for about 25 minutes. Yeah. 
So here is our final product. This looks and smells spectacular. So give me one second. I'm gonna slice me up a piece and grab me some of these potatoes and I'll be right with you. So. Okay, so now I've got my meatloaf and potatoes served up and I just wanted to show you that I'm using American Beauty beef gravy for mine. Um, like I was saying earlier, I don't like ketchup so I wasn't gonna do the ketchup topping. So feel free to do the ketchup topping if that's what you like on your meatloaf. But I already had warmed a can up for a little bit in the microwave. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on there and then I'm just gonna go in because I've been waiting for such a long time. Oh, it's so steamy hot. It's hot. I'm gonna burn my mouth. Mm. Just like I expected. Really, really good. And these potatoes have the ranch and then like all the stuff from the meatloaf all mixed in together with it and the grease. And they're like spectacular. So, um, thanks for coming to Jackie's Kitchen today. Excuse me. So thank you for watching and I hope you like the meatloaf and potatoes. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy. Make sure you comment down below and tell us what you put on top or what the name of the sauce is. Um, or if there is no name for the sauce, the glaze, whatever it's called for the top. So like, share, subscribe and join us next time in Jackie's Kitchen. Bye.